at Kenny Brownlee here, thefinalgate.com. You ever wonder where the dinosaurs were in history? Well, I'm going to show you that the dinosaurs lived in the time of Adam to the flood. So the dinosaurs lived in this period of time on our earth, uh, a little over 4,000, 4, you know, 4,500 years ago. Notice how long these people lived. Adam lived 930 years. Uh, Methuselah is the longest person recorded uh, in lifespan of uh, 969 years. So these people lived a long time. Uh, the world was created uh, basically to sustain life, I mean to, you know, so that life could thrive. Well, let me show you kind of what I believe the world looked like in the beginning when God created. Have you ever seen this map uh, where they show the continents at one time was, was a single continent and how over hundreds of millions of years that it, it broke apart into what we have today. Well, the truth is, I, I believe this, but it, it's not a matter of 200 million years. Our earth looked like this up here in the beginning when God created it. Okay? Now, we, we, we can only imagine with images or paintings that people have painted of what the world looked like for Adam and Eve and his descendants. Uh, and we see what man or what science indicates that what the environment looked like for dinosaurs. Okay? I mean, lush, wonderful, tropical uh, type environment. Okay? I mean, imagine this forest, for example, and a flood came along and covered up millions of acres of, of land like this or vegetation like this. I mean, that's where our oil, our coal fields come from. That's how that happened. It wasn't hundreds of millions of years. It, it happened in a short period of time, like the flood. Science has found uh, fossils where a dragonfly is actually two and a half feet wingspan. That's because creatures during that time of Adam, they lived for long periods of time, just like man did. Uh, animals did too. Alligators, if they lived to be a couple of hundred years old, they could easily grow to be 35, 40 feet. You know, and most <laughs> dinosaurs are reptiles. So they never really stopped growing, and they, they were lived in an environment that give them such a, an advantage to live longer and to thrive. Dinosaurs wouldn't have had any trouble at all living in this tropical world of a single continent. Let's look at the Bible, and there's two references in the Bible in Job that seems to be describing uh, some type of dinosaur creature. The first is in Job 40, and it's called Behemoth. And, he, and the scripture says, which I made along with you, indicating that he created this creature with Adam, with man. And this creature had a tail like a cedar. Well, there's other things that describe this creature. I encourage you to read it. There's another creature in the next chapter in Job 41 that's called Leviathan. Again, read this scripture and see what you think and see if you if this creature doesn't sound like it's some type of uh, dinosaur. Now, in my opinion, I think Job was describing this creature. And I know this is Godzilla. That's the best image I could find that fits that Leviathan. Okay? So there's no doubt he's describing two dinosaurs here that, that was made with Adam. Now, a lot of people want to argue about those two scriptures that maybe they're just metaphors or maybe they were talking about, a lot of people indicate that, that, uh, that the behemoth was actually a hippopotamus. Well, let's look at Job 38, some things God said. 
He called a lion a lion. He called a raven a raven. He called a goat a goat. He called a donkey a donkey. An ox, he called an ox. An ostrich, he called a horse a horse. He called a hawk a hawk. He called an eagle an eagle. Why would he get over into the next chapters and describe two creatures and make up some silly mythical name? God wouldn't have done that. The, the behemoth was a behemoth. The Leviathan is a Leviathan. We'll see in Psalms 104 that David actually mentions Leviathan. And he mentions that he plays around in the oceans. Okay? So this is not a mythical creature. It, it was a real creature that lived on earth with man at some point. Now, let's take a look at Genesis 6. And let's read about what led up to the flood. As we can see, it says that uh, man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the sons and God daughters uh, saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, so they took them as wives. The Lord said here, this is important, He said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. So God sees Adam and his descendants are living hundreds and hundreds of years old. Well, God's made a decision here that he's going to have to stop that, okay? Now, keep that in mind. Now, he said there were giants on the earth in those days. And afterward, the sons came, uh, sons of God came into the daughters of men and bore children. Those were mighty men who were of old. Giants? It's a hybrid race. So God, eventually, there was weakness. That weakness was so uh, abound on earth that grieved God, and he was sorry that he had made man. So he told Noah, he said, The end of all flesh has come to me, has come before me. The earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now that's important right there. It's also important that he's needing to uh, shorten the lifespan of man, and there's so much weakness, okay? So what God did... He decided to bring a flood on. Well, he was going to destroy what he had created. So he had this one single continent, and the flood actually is what broke up our continents, not hundreds of millions of years of evolution. The flood was a catastrophic event that totally changed our environment. It changed this world. It totally changed it. Okay? Why? Well, he's got, he, he's got to change up the environment so that man can't live but 120 years. He's got to change that up. Okay, now we're going to have extreme weather. Now we're going to have the force, we're going to have cold weather. You know, the highest mountain tops today is as much as five and a half miles tall. Okay? The deepest parts of our ocean is like 6.79 miles deep. So after the flood, the Bible says that the water rescinded. Well, where did it rescind to? Well, it rescinded back into the earth. God opened the chasms of earth to, to absorb the water so that dry land would appear again. He did the same thing on day three. He separated the water and he, he allowed dry land to appear. Well, he here he did it again. He 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 he, uh, he separated the water and so that dry land would appear. And he did that by creating these huge trenches in our ocean floors, and also by splitting up the continents into all these different uh, single continents. Now, now we have polar ice, ice caps. We have an ice age here. <laughs> I know. Stay with me. We have an ice age here after the flood. Now let's look at our earth today. God did all this to, to accomplish the things that he said back in Genesis. He needed to shorten man's lifespan, so he changed our environment. He changed the world. In fact, the world's dying. Now I know people don't want to hear that. But, but it is. The world's dying. 
Let me show you. Let's look in Romans. In uh, uh, chapter 8, verse 21, he said, Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Well, what is Paul saying here? He's saying that the world itself, the creation itself mourns, and it's looking for redemption. Why is it looking for redemption? Because when God brought on the flood, he, he set in motion the world to die, to start dying. Because of sin, the world itself groans and is looking forward to the redemption and uh, of God when he comes back. Okay? That's a nice image from one of our satellites. I mean, this is a beautiful planet, but it's dying. Listen to what it says in... Uh, Listen to what it says here. That's Isaiah 65, 17. It says, For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah 66, 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me. In 2 Peter 3, 13, it says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look forward to new heavens and a new earth. With, in which righteousness dwells. Now in Revelation 21, 1, it says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Well, what are we talking about here? We're talking about when God brought on the flood, He shortened man's lifespan. He set in motion for the world or creation to die. And he changed our weather patterns. He totally changed everything. And he also got rid of the weakness in the world of all the hybrid that was being that a man had uh, created and all the death that was coming. Listen, it's not that hard to, to understand that the dinosaurs were in the age of Adam to the flood. The world was was lush with everything it needed to sustain life for dinosaurs and man. There's no reason to think that. In the art, God just simply chose not to bring on board some of these huge creatures. Uh, and so that, that's where they actually became extinct. Some of them did make it. Alligators, crocodiles, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, monitor lizards and all kind of reptile creatures and, and uh, aquatic life in our oceans. A lot of these creatures survived, you know, into our modern day. And listen, if you can, if you can imagine a modern day crocodile, if it could live three, 400 years, it could grow to 40 feet easily. But they don't because they don't live that long. They die around 80 years and that's about it. 20 feet, I think, is about pretty close to the biggest one on record. But the point is, man, there's no problem as a Christian for you to accept and believe that dinosaurs existed pre-flood. It's, it's there. This universe has only been around for over, a little over 6,000 years. It's not hundreds and billions of years old. That's ridiculous. Don't get drawn into this trap of evolution. Don't let school systems teach your kids all this crap. You need to sit down with them and explain to them where the dinosaurs are in, in God's world. Okay? And listen, thanks for watching. The final, uh, final uh, gate.com.